Welcome back to Daddy Guy's Kitchen. It's just our favorite kind of day in Daddy Guy's Kitchen. It's Sunday. The only thing we have to think about today is this massive dinner party we're throwing tonight for Mommy Gal's birthday. Shmoo has had a meal, he's had a nap, he's in kind of an engageable, playful place where he's enjoying his time in Daddy Guy's Kitchen, which means we get to get down to work and start getting really serious about the pièce de résistance, that which will define Mommy Gal's birthday, the beef. It's just become our tradition. It's what she loves. It's sumptuous. It's delicious. And from a from an amazing cut of beef, you can then precipitate down into a, a wonderful experiences of, of sides and um, different kinds of things to pair and sauces. It just it's kind of the direction we tend to head in. And tonight. I'm doing something for the first time. I'm roasting whole beef tenderloins. Over the course of the last year or so, our our taste has really evolved from like the fatty ribeye. I was doing a lot of whole like sort of two pound bone and ribeyes for us, and then larger like eight bone, four pound standing rib roast for the holidays. Um, we've really been taking a leaner approach doing things a little bit more delicately, and that is meant filet mignon. Now for the two of us, I'll do a filet each on a Thursday or a Friday evening, more like Friday and Saturday. Let's, let's be real here, we're not having filets on Thursdays around here. We get, we're working hard for the money, we gotta keep going. At any rate, because we have 20 guests coming over this evening, I'm just going for the glory and I'm roasting two beautiful whole beef tenderloins. And we'll get those out much closer to the time our guests are arriving. But what's going to really cap this beef experience off is the Bordelais sauce that we're going to use to accompany the beef. Bordelais is probably Alice's favorite condiment, food, whatever. She's just totally in love with it. So we've got a slightly fussy shmoo here, but we're going to see how things, how things pan out with him. So I'm just going to dive in. This is going to take me a little while to prep all of this. Um, so stick around, have fun while I begin to mince up these shallots. And then we're going to do the same of slicing some mushrooms. And we're going to dice up this carrot. And then ultimately we're going to get that into a pan with some red wine to reduce down to that sort of flavorful essence. So stick around while I start slicing and dicing. You ready to make a big party for Mommy Gal's birthday? It's a big one. Everyone's coming and they're going to want to see Schmood. Ah! Moving right along into our mushrooms. I'm going to do these a little bit unorthodox like for myself. Usually I would stem these mushrooms and you know slice them ever so carefully to maintain a really nice texture for our sauce. But these mushrooms are actually going to get strained out. They're not going to be in the final sauce. So because of that I'm not going to be I really don't uh, care about the texture of those stems. I'm just going to kind of go to town here and do this as quickly and expeditiously as possible. And our final step is going to be one small carrot finely chopped. So I'm going to get this guy peeled up. And again, it's a tricky balance here because it doesn't really matter the texture of this carrot because it's going to be discarded um, later on. But the smaller our pieces, the more surface area is going to be exposed to the wine that we're going to be reducing this in, the more carrot flavor we're going to be able to pull out. So I'm still going to be pretty aggressive in getting these cut down to a nice fine dice. You get these carrots small enough, they'll actually kind of begin to mush off and you'll get sort of a carrot puree that'll make it through the sieve and be part of the solids of the sauce and that's going to create a wonderful rich sweet earthy flavor as a foundation that we're then going to build up with wine and I can't wait to talk to you about what sort of defines a Bordelais as a Bordelais because it's actually a scientific process of extracting the water out of flavorful things like wine and then re-emulsifying that same flavorful liquid with fat instead of water and in this case we're going to be using the real McCoy bone marrow of uh, beef bone marrow. So. so it's time to get serious about this Bordelais sauce and we have got a heavy bottom soup pot. Um, usually for a Bordelais I would use a very delicate pot kind of like this one, this lovely rounded side delicate saucier which is so wonderful for whipping up one of these classic French sauces. But I'm making a lot of this. I have 20 folks coming over this evening so I'm eschewing what I thought would work for a much larger vessel because I actually need six cups of red wine. Now remember I was saying that Bordelais is all about reduction and eliminating water so that fat can be reintroduced. When this six cups of wine is reduced down to about um, a cup and a half, we'll know that we're good to strain off our vegetables and take the sauce to the next level. And just to help things out a little bit, I'm going to help this get up to a boil. 
we love pepper in this house. So while I should probably be counting these peppercorns and making sure this is, you know, not crazy and over the top, I've just got, you know, maybe a million peppercorns in there. Who knows? There's a lot, probably too many. But I'm just going to go ahead and give these a quick rough and tumble pass under my pestle of my mortar and pestle. And I certainly don't see any harm in going ahead and introducing these to our wine as it comes up to a simmer. Let's get that flavor in and going. So getting a little bit ahead here, just taking a chance to get a few steps ahead on this Bordelaise. Um, my recipe called for veal stock and I couldn't find just veal stock in the store. I don't think that's actually available these days. But what I do have and what I always keep in my pantry are these wonderful little pucks of magic, I call them. Uh, this classic uh, French demi-glace that is in a sort of a concentrated gelatinous form and these great little pucks as I call them. And I'm going to reconstitute this concentrated veal and beef stock with hot water and essentially yield the veal stock that I needed for this recipe. I need about four cups here, so I've got four of my pucks and I'm just gonna mix those with some hot water in my pan. So we've got our four pucks of concentrated veal demi-glace into our simmering pot here. And you see we just kind of have these chunks and we're gonna, gonna just kind of Press those through with our, with our whisk and slowly but surely bring this up to a simmer and let those chunks melt down into our reconstituted veal stock. And wonder of wonders, our wine is now up to a full rolling boil. Grab my handy dandy pastry scraper here and I'm just going to start loading this down with our shallot and carrot and mushroom. And then we'll have a few other prized additions to make there. Such a good feeling to begin clearing off a full cutting board. It means we're moving forward, we're gaining space to do more. We're now going to take just whatever I have left over of a package of thyme. It's going to have to be enough. I'm going to grab a couple of really nice, I love it when I can get like a little stem of bay leaves ready to go just like that. Beautiful. And we're just gonna give this a stir and we're gonna let this cook away. Just checking in on our red wine reduction here. I would say we've probably reduced our volume easily by half. And again, we're going for a cup and a half of liquid here and this certainly has a little ways to go. I would. So my vote says that what I'm looking at here is gonna be about two cups of wine uh, after it's been reduced. So I'm going to go ahead and call it quits on this reduction effort. I've set up for myself just a mixing bowl. I happen to have just washed, so it's right here in handy. I've got a strainer set up. If I had some cheesecloth, I'd use it. I just don't, and that's okay. So right off the stove and into my setup here. Now this is probably going to fall, so don't cry when it does. The good news is you can always re-sieve something. And I actually really want to get a decent amount of my solids in that sieve, and I'll show you why. And all told, what I'm actually going for here, I'd love to have two cups of this reduced wine. And I think, oh most joyous of days, this is my two cup measure. You know, you, you live a, a well-intentioned life, you say your prayers, you pay your taxes, you love and the universe will provide for you. Two cups of perfectly reduced, flavorful, aromatic red wine that I can now carry on into the next phase of this beautiful Bordelaise. We're gonna bring our precious, holy two cups of reduced wine back up to a boil. I've broken this Bordelais sauce into two phases. The early day, kind of day before pre-phase that I actually could have done yesterday and then been ready for dinner tonight. And the part that's going to happen right before the steak is served. This Bordelais, um, it's kind of a volatile sauce. You want it to be as fresh and, and hot off the stove as it possibly can be. So I'm going to try to, the Bordelais being finished is what will cue that it's time to sit down for dinner tonight. That's the last step in this phase, the early day sort of pre-game part of this Bordelais is the addition of something that's going to just give it so much wonderful flavor. And this is Madeira wine. Madeira wine is just delicious, sweet, almost port-like wine. And what I'm going for is four tablespoons of Madeira. One, two, three, four. Never being afraid of a little overpour for good measure. Now arrowroot, um, I 
We'll have to Wikipedia it. I don't have a ton of background on it, but it's a, th it's a sort of natural thickening agent that we're going to use to help uh, bring this Bordelaise together. 16 teaspoons, and I have a teaspoon in my hand. I could do the math and do it in tablespoons and make it easier, but for now, two, three, 13, 14, there are certain things like in baking you need to be super precise about. This addition of arrowroot, not one of them. So I'm going to give this a whiskin, and boy, this really has turned into a thick, thick application of Madeira. And now we just kind of have this slurry of arrowroot and Madeira, which is going to be the first step we take in beginning to thicken this Bordelaise. And coming over, perfectly timed, I brought my veal stuff that I reconstituted back up to a simmer. As I've done for my red wine reduction, I'm going to go ahead and mix these two items together. Because both were hot, I'm going to minimize any shock to my cooking process here by cooling things down. This should be back up to a simmer in no time. And now that we're at a staunch simmer on our Bordelais base, I have that arrowroot and Madeira slurry that I whipped up a few minutes ago. And I'm just going to slowly stream this in while whisking. Oh, and wow, it really has thickened this up quickly. I have to say I'm a little surprised that arrowroot has sprung to life. And we're now looking at really almost more like a really thick, beautiful sauce here. And we're just going to let this simmer for maybe two minutes, become a little bit thicker. We want to see it kind of become glossy and almost develop a luster. I'm just going to take a chance before I call it a day on phase one to give this a taste. Oh, and you can see here that we've developed a nappe, which is the French term, which basically means the sauce is, the sauce is thickened. It coats a spoon and creates a, a distinguished line if you draw your finger across. Um, I'm going to go ahead and call it a day for phase one. I'm going to turn off my heat. I'm going to let this sit and cool to room temperature and probably, will, given our timing right now, won't need to refrigerate this, but I may pop it in the fridge. But last night I soaked uh, 12, six pounds of beef marrow bones in some warm water and then I shucked the bone marrow out of those bones and I've been um, soaking it in cold water overnight. Uh, I've changed the water several times to keep things on the up and up with cleanliness and what I'm, has resulted are these wonderful sort of cubes of beef bone marrow. Okay, I don't know how many hours we've been at this. We began around 9 a.m. Uh, today, and it's uh, 6.15 by the Daddy Guy watch clock. Guests should be arriving in 45 minutes, so we're already seeing a solid trickle in. Um, we got some music playing, there's some cocktails flowing, and this is when it is go time. Nothing is planned at this point. I just know we've got a lot of food to make and not this so long to do it. So bear with me, things are flying in real time here. Um, I want to begin poaching our bone marrow. This is, I've been setting this one up for a while because it's pretty magical. I'm gonna bring, woo, hallelujah, two cups of water and two cups of beef broth up to a simmer on our stove. And I'm gonna eyeball what I think about a teaspoon of salt is gonna look like. There we go. And now, out from its all night slumber in my refrigerator, whew, our beautiful bone marrow, which has been sort of resting and preparing for its poach all day. I'm actually gonna go ahead and put our marrow in our poaching liquid because they might as well come up to temperature at the same time because it's gonna take a little effort to warm up that cold marrow that's been in the fridge all night long. I like to wash my hands after handling bone marrow. Just feels like, just feels like the right thing to do.